In this video I'm going to show you how to modify an LC31 coupler to add additional turns of wire to increase the inductance. This is an old coupler but the idea will be the same with all of the particular units. First of all you'll need to remove the wire jumper that connects the two terminals at the end of the coupler that go to the plasma tube together. Now, there are two ends of the coupler. This is the input end. You want to remove the jumper from the opposite end, which has only one terminal block. So we'll do that by loosening the two screws and allowing the jumper to fall out. Now that the jumper has come out, we need to put a piece of black electrical tape, insulating electrical tape, over the spot where the wire is attached to the coil or comes out of the coil so that we don't accidentally cause a short circuit. Here I've cut some, pre-cut a couple of pieces of tape and I'm going to apply them directly over that area, one on top of the other to get a double layer, insulating layer. Alright, now that we've done that, we need about one and a half meters of copper wire. Uh, this is enamel insulated 18 gauge. Strip one end of the wire back by about a quarter of an inch and after it's stripped, insert it into the terminal block connection where the wire from the existing coil is located. So you want to mount it, place it carefully in there, then tighten the screw up so that it's in place. After the wire is attached to the terminal block, come down to about the top of the existing coil and bend the wire at right angles so it is moving in the same direction as the coil originally was wound. Now carefully wind about four to six turns of wire around the end of the coil. Just continue to do this one turn after another until you have about the proper number of turns. Neatness is not absolutely necessary and you can use your fingers to force the wire down in the approximate position. After you've gotten the right number of turns on the wire, hold the wire in place and cut off the extra wire so that you have about an inch left. Strip the end of the wire bare and using a pair of needle nose pliers, bend the wire so that it can be carefully placed into the other terminal of the coupler. There should be no wires on that coupler because remember the first terminal had the wire from the main coil and the additional coil that you've just added. Now use your screwdriver and tighten this wire up. Now you can slide the wires back in place. You can use some tape to hold them in place if you want. What you should have now is pretty much an extension of the original coil. If you don't have the exact type of wire that was used on the coil, uh, any standard insulated wire will do. You just want about a half a dozen turns there. Now, from this point, you've added additional wire to the coil. You have more inductance as you should get more voltage. So now you'll use one terminal from the electrode. One electrode will go to this end of the coil and the other terminal of the coupler, you, the electrode wire will go to the terminal that has the open end or the finish end of the new winding you've put on there. So that gives you two options. You can use the original coupler winding by connecting to this terminal, or you can use the original winding plus the additional winding you added by using this terminal. And that is essentially the procedure for adding more inductance. And you only need to add it on one end of the coil, and it is strongly suggested to wind it on the end of the coil away from the input end, because if you use the input end, You've got to force the wire underneath all of the wiring here, and it's just a pain to do. Much easier to do on the other end. So that's it. Have fun, and happy rifing.